I was doing something unusual last night. I was watching CNN, and Senator Sanders was on talking to Anderson Cooper, and there was one part that particularly caught my eye. Remember the context here. James Carville, at the last moment before New Hampshire, decided it would be a good idea to jump into the race, ranting and raving about how Bernie Sanders would be a disaster, and he endorsed Michael Bennett, Smart. who got a total of, like, 500 votes. That's and then, what master strategists do. And then right? instantly dropped out. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Demonstrating the, the brilliance of his approach. So Anderson asked Bernie about this, and this is what happened. Look, uh, James, in all due respect, is a political hack uh, who said very terrible things when he was working for Clinton uh, against Barack Obama. I think he said some of the same things. Uh, look, we are taking on the establishment. This is no secret to anybody. We're taking on the wall. I guess uh, the former head of Goldman Sachs uh, attacked me uh, yesterday. Yeah, he had We're taking on Wall well. Street. He did, yeah. Wall Street. And the insurance companies don't like me. And you know what? The pharmaceutical industry, which is charging us 10 times more for the same drugs they sell in Canada, they don't like me either. Nor does the fossil fuel industry because their product happens to be destroying our planet. Nor does the military industrial complex or the prison industrial complex. We are taking on Trump, the Republican establishment, Carvel, and the Democratic establishment. But at the end of the day, the grassroots movement that we are putting together of young people, of working people, of people of color, want real change. <laughs> I love that, uh, with all due respect. Yeah. I'm gonna with incorporate all due respect. that. Anderson, <laughs> James is a political act. That's beautiful. I mean, that really, really was. I mean, it's funny because there are a few things in the James Carville rant I actually do agree with and think are problem spots for Democrats. But ironically, Carville was more indicting. He indicted this guy, Benjamin Applebaum, over at the New York Times for tweeting about the free college plan and basically calling LSU not a real school. So ironically, like, his indictment of the Democratic Party yeah. was much more of the, not the Bernie wing, but actually the neoliberal wing advocating for like free to it, like sorry, the neoliberal wing, which is like smugly looks down upon the working right. class. And it wasn't even, it wasn't really a Bernie criticism. It was of, it was of elite liberalism of which Carville is on James, is, is on, you know, Morning Joe every day. Well, and here's, like, I mean, that's the thing that is yeah. interesting to me. And I don't think that this is confined to James Carville. There is a certain part of the Carville Clinton initial strategy mm -hmm. that he ran as a populist. Absolutely. He did not govern as right. a populist, but he ran as a mm -hmm. populist. And so he understood, James Carville and the whole team understood a strain of that at that time. But I think they just can't wrap their head around the politics of Bernie Sanders. So they think that you know, his leftism is like across the board, which mm -hmm. it is, but it's about a matter of what you're focusing on. And the fact that he's putting economics at the center, look, it wasn't Carville the one that said it's the economy, it's the stupid. economy stupid. You know, it's, you're, it's, it's good. These, I've studied the 92 election a lot because it's, it's a very strange thing where the actual election itself was erased by the DLC. Like the DLC and all of the neoliberalism that came to define the Clinton campaign or the Clinton presidency was not the Clinton campaign itself. The Clinton campaign was about this guy with an accent from Arkansas who pumped a lot of money into schools so that kids could read. It was an indictment of trickle-down economics. Now, they ended up you know, embracing, embracing neoliberalism and free trade and much of Reaganism economic agenda. But the spin that you put on it, if you go back, you watch, I mean, Clinton had one of these knockout moments in the debate where somebody asked him about the national debt, but Bill Clinton knew that she wasn't asking about the national debt. She was really asking about the economy. And he's like, I know people who lose their jobs when factory closes and get shipped overseas. I know people who have suffered for years at the hands of trickle-down economics. It was truly about working people and a working class campaign, about appealing to average Americans. I mean, he used to hug women and be like, yeah. I feel your pain. Was, that was his pain. thing. That was, that was like a true connection with the American voter about the economic pain that trickle-down economics has inflicted upon people. And then, I mean, he governed completely against that. Right. But that's why he won the presidency. That's what brought yeah. him from behind to yeah. win in a massive upset. And, I mean, Bernie Sanders very stylistically, obviously, completely different. Mm -hmm. He's not a touchy-feely kind of person. Like, that's not who he is. 
But the campaign they've run does sound some of those notes. I mean, he's turned over the microphone to people with who, cancer, right? With cancer, I've seen it. who are yeah. struggling with bankruptcy and medical mm -hmm. debt, and just pour their hearts out about what this campaign means to them. So there are actually a lot of parallels between the '92 campaign. But I just think that Carville, I just think he can't wrap his head around how yeah. these things can and have he, any. And like I said, viscerally understood it. The Clinton campaign of 92 is one of the best political campaigns ever run. Now, look, they had a lot of problems. You know, Ross Perot. Ross Perot probably did cost HW the election. But And there were all these different things going on. But Bill Clinton tapped into something very, very interesting back in 1992. And he never ran on it ever again. He barely won the 96 you know, election and all that. He kind of squandered his entire presidency, didn't do anything really big. But 90, the 92 election was a big turning point for economic populism. He kind of claimed that mantle of the Southern Democrat, not in the way that we think about it now, but fiscally conservative, socially liberal, but really about like fiscally liberal, socially conservative. It's the last time that that election was really run in American politics. Yeah. And by the end, yeah. and certainly by the time you got to the Hillary Clinton oh, candidacies had been yeah. flipped completely on its yeah, head, right. where all that was left was the cultural liberalism yes. and the, you know, the economic piece had completely mm -hmm. fallen by the wayside. I know what we should do, though, Sagar. We should send Mr. Carvel our book. Oh, Hot yeah. Ghost Guide to 2020. It'll help him understand <laughs> all of this so that he can see the connective tissue <laughs> between that 92 campaign sure. and the populism as today. And by the way, guys, if you have anyone in your life who needs some help understanding mm -hmm. this, or if you want to check out the book, I think you guys will enjoy it very much. Right. Um, head over to Amazon or Barnes & Noble. It's up on Kindle now. Uh, and it's been, so far, people seem to really like people it. People are really enjoying it. I think one of the favorite things I hear about the show all the time is, we can send your show to my boomer parents so they can explain, they can understand my politics. Yes. That's kind of what we tried to put into the book. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, and by the way, we've seen your questions. Mm -hmm. The audiobook is coming. It's coming. It is in the review process. It should be out either next week or the week Lord after. Lord Bezos is not yet happy with us. He, he has bestow us. a blessing upon us. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. And yeah. by the way, if you get the book, tweet a picture of it mm -hmm. or you with the book or whatever so we can repost it. That's right. We love that. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in a bit.